you know, DeSantis did um, obviously come out and have some comments today. And, you know, he's not announced, Michael. No, he But has he's not. trying to, you know, insert what he thinks will be something to appeal to Iowa voters. I wonder if he's hurting or helping himself. Having run for office myself several times, mm -hmm. Timing is a big part of it. It's part of the tactics, and you're, you're going against the best counterpuncher in the business, Donald Trump. So I think it would have been great to be, see them side by side today in Iowa, so I'm, I'm very upset with the weather. Mother Nature robbed <laughs> us of that, but let's take a little bit of a, a clip here and listen to what Ron DeSantis said earlier today, stopping short of making that official White House run announcement. Take a listen. Both Florida and Iowa show strong leadership, and a bold agenda can defeat the left in this country. But there's no substitute for victory. We must reject the culture of losing that has infected our party in recent years. The time for excuses is over. We gotta demonstrate the courage to lead and the strength to win. If we do that, if we make 2024 election a referendum on Joe Biden and his failures, and if we provide a positive alternative for the future of this country, Republicans will win across the board. <laughs> These dulling events come as a majority of Florida's registered Republican voters say they support former President Donald Trump as the 2024 GOP presidential nominee over Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. That's according to a new poll conducted by Florida Atlantic University and mainstream research. Yeah, um, we we're going to get to some of the new poll numbers this evening for you, but we know it's been quite a week for President Trump. He participated in that town hall with CNN Wednesday night. Big ratings getter for CNN. Let's listen to some of uh, his comments that evening. This woman, I don't know her. I never met her. It's better than what we're doing right now because we're spending money like drunken sailors. So You're going to have... Millions of people pouring into our country right now at a level that nobody's ever seen before. I would like for you to answer the question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You are a nasty person. Well, it sure was entertaining to watch, wasn't it? Joining us now, former Arkansas governor, former presidential candidate himself, Mike Huckabee. Governor, always great to have you in with us. I mean, uh, I know Ron DeSantis had his comments earlier, but, you know, when you watch that town hall, a lot of people were saying this is Trump's, and it's clear he is the one um, who will take, obviously, the GOP, uh, the GOP ticket. There's nobody who can go on that stage quite like he can. I mean, I think all of us wish we could, but he has a level of, of control when he gets out there. He's fearless. It just, nothing bothers him. And I mean, the whole time, Caitlin Collins was talking over him. She was uh, calling him a liar to his face constantly. And he blew it off like it was a mosquito. I, I said it was almost like uh, you had some uh, young teenage girl going to the mall with her father and she was begging for every Louis Vuitton purse in the store, and he was just basically saying, I don't think so. So it was really, a, I think, a powerful display of why Donald Trump is so effective and why there's such a following for him, and quite frankly, why he's 37 points ahead in the latest uh, poll in the Republican primary. Yeah, he owned CNN that night. I thought the questions were really sophomoric and clearly showing the bias that CNN has with a Republican. They wouldn't have asked those questions uh, if it was a Democrat. We know that. Uh, we have a little bit of Anderson Cooper, you know, this clutching the pearls moment after, you know, how he's sort of, you know, talking about the reaction, which was negative, obviously, for folks who said CNN shouldn't have given Trump a platform. Let's play a little bit of that for our audience this Saturday, Governor. Many of you have expressed deep anger and disappointment. Many of you are upset that someone who attempted to destroy our democracy was invited to sit on a stage in front of a crowd of Republican voters to answer questions. You have every right to be outraged today and angry and never watch this network again. Destroy our democracy. Here we have Biden, who is refusing to do debates. He would never do a town hall. He'd never come on Newsmax. It's really incredible how uh, the commentators also took away what they saw and what the crowd clearly was supporting that evening inside of St. Anselm College. Yeah, Bianca, you know, when uh, Anderson Cooper says, 
a person who is trying to destroy democracy. Let me school Anderson a little bit on who's been trying to destroy democracy. It's press hacks like him and all of the uh, clowns at CNN who won't cover real news stories, and they turn their news channel into nothing more than an arm of the Democrat Party. Uh, another way we're destroying democracy is having a dual justice system where you've got police raids, SWAT teams going into Mar-a-Lago and Roger Stone's house and grabbing Peter Navarro at the airport, uh, putting him in shackles. And yet Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, they can leave records out by his Corvette in an open garage. That's not a problem. Got a few boxes in Chinatown. Don't worry about it. That's what's destroying democracy, is that you have the highest levels of people at the FBI, the CIA, and the Department of Justice who have tried, tried diligently to undo the election of 2016. They've tried diligently to get Donald Trump thrown out of office through phony impeachments. That's what's destroying democracy. And now they're doing it down on the border by allowing an open border to just drain people out of countries from around the globe and come here and expect all of us as taxpayers to pay for it. That's destroying democracy. Governor, if I, I'd like to follow up on that because I think you're 100% right. I couldn't have said it better myself, and I've been following this now for, for weeks and months. This week, we saw the end of Title 42. Now, we, might not he we may not hear from President Trump tonight, but he did post this clip on Truth Social earlier today. Take a listen. The massive invasion of our southern border is unprecedented anywhere in the world. It's absolutely crazy. So CBS News is reporting unoccupied migrant child. And un I want to stress this. This is a child in U.S. custody. It's the second death in two months. These are children we're talking about. When is this going to change, Governor? Michael, it's not going to change as long as Joe Biden is running the show. Uh, he, he may send Kamala Harris as his border czar. Well, that's a joke. Uh, but, I mean, AOC hadn't shed a tear over this. But every American ought to be shedding some tears, not just over the one. But we have thousands and thousands of little children who are making it across the border. And sadly, they're turned into sex slaves. They're being trafficked as human objects. It's just absolutely atrocious. And the tens of thousands of tons of fentanyl that are coming across, killing over 100,000 Americans in every one of the 50 states, people ought to be outraged about that. But unfortunately, many people don't even know it's happening because the major networks are oblivious to it. They're not telling the people what's happening. I just don't think they care. It's so sad, as you talked about, Governor, the humanitarian crisis. And again, this is not a problem uh, that is going to just solve itself. And we now have a national security threat that will linger in our country for decades, as we do not know who's coming across. Um, great to have you in. I know uh, a little disappointment because of the rally, but not disappointed to hear all these things that are happening and get your analysis, because it's such an important time right now for voters to really understand the impact of what's happening uh, when you look at the candidates on the table. Governor Huckabee, thank you so much. Thank you. Great to be with you.